Just exposed to, to drugs, uh, exposed to the violence, and just seeing this every single day. Jermaine Wilson knew all too well the lifestyle of drug dealers. Growing up in the streets of a poor Leavenworth, Kansas neighborhood with little hope of a future, he even dreamed of becoming one. Uh, we would see these drug dealers, you know, they're pulling out wads of money, the exciting, it looked thrilling. And I said, man, I want what he got. To Jermaine, that also meant having the respect of others, something he never had. Uh, people will always make fun of me. And I ended up getting the name uh, too short, too fat, too ugly, and I always wanted to fit in. But there was one person who made Jermaine feel safe and accepted. My brother was, he was my protector. Uh, he was my role model, and I felt like he could not do any wrong uh, in my life, and I wanted to be just like him. Which not only meant hanging out with his brother and his friends, but also doing drugs and committing small crimes. Because my brother was constantly doing it, everybody else was doing it, I didn't want to be like the outcast and not do it. Eventually, his brother wound up in juvenile detention for theft. But 12-year-old Jermaine continued on, spending the next three years doing drugs, getting into fights, and stealing. Then at 15, he also landed in juvenile detention. What started as a two-year sentence turned into four after the angry teenager tried to escape. I felt like the system had played me, and I truly felt like that I was going to have to make up for lost time. I learned more about drugs being incarcerated than I've ever had. And I told myself, I said, you know what? When I get out here, I know how to make money, and I'm going to make it quickly, and everybody's going to know exactly who I am. Once released and back home, Jermaine set his plan in motion. Using the skills and connections he made in prison, he quickly became one of the leading drug dealers in his area. I seen how quickly the money came, and I seen, you know, how the customers would come back, and just the level of respect that they showed me. And it, yes, it did give me a sense of power. But there were some things that came with money and status he didn't count on. So over a period of time, paranoia really, really was setting in on me. So I started, you know, heavily using uh, ecstasy pills to help me cope with what I was going through. I worried, not knowing if I was going to get robbed, uh, not knowing if I was going to get busted by the cops. Those feelings only got worse after his longtime girlfriend gave birth to his son, Jermaine Jr. And I felt like it was just a matter of time before I end up getting caught and losing everything. I was just trying to drown out this feeling. I would just talk to myself. I said, man, I need something different. Like, this is killing me. In 2008, only two years after being released, he was back in prison, arrested for drug possession. Jermaine realized the status and power he thought he enjoyed had been a lie. I knew deep down inside of my heart that, you know, people didn't care about me. They cared about the material things that I had. I felt like these were the things that defined who I was. But once I lost all of those things, I was broken. Nine months into his sentence, Jermaine was considering taking his own life when he remembered a time in his childhood. And I remember, you know, my mom used to make us go to church and we were sitting in Sunday school. And I always used to hear about a man named Jesus, how he forgives, how he gives second chances, how he restores and gives hope. And these stories started coming to my mind as I'm sitting on my prison floor, crying, bawling out, not knowing what's gonna happen for me. I want something different, I, I need help. And I said, God, like, if you truly are real, please, please forgive me of my sins. Give me another chance for me to be with my family. Help me to become me. Help me to, to, to become fulfilled because I don't want to continue to live this lifestyle anymore. And when I cried out to God, that's when, first time in my life, I felt free. That's when I started feeling peace. And I just felt the love and the, the, the compassion that came from Jesus just being inside of my heart. And that's when I knew that, you know, life was gonna be different for me. Since his release in 2010, Jermaine has been ministering to inmates and people in his community as an ordained pastor. 
Now married to his girlfriend, Jessica, this one-time drug dealer and convict has risen to new heights as the mayor of Leavenworth, Kansas. So as I was going through my journey, searching throughout life, you know, I was looking for happiness and joy and peace, you know, through all these material things, the fulfillment that I needed, Christ gave to me, the acceptance that I needed, Christ gave to me, the joy, the hope, the peace, and most of all, the forgiveness Christ gave to me. And that's why I'm here today. And Christ will give you the same thing. He wants to. He wants to restore you. He wants to forgive you. He wants to set you free. Why does he want all of this? Because he loves you. Because he made you. Because you're precious in his sight. Because you are his child. You can't run away from that. You are his child. His breath is in you. I love Jermaine's prayer, and I encourage you to pray that. But here's part of his prayer you may not have really paid attention to. God, help me to be me. Now, what does that mean? Help, help me to be me. Who are you? Do you identify as a drug dealer? Do you identify as someone who's worthless? Do you identify with any of those negative things? Or do you identify, I'm a child of God. I'm a prince in his household. That's who I am. That's who he made me to be. And that's what I'm going to be. How you view yourself is absolutely critical to how you are going to act. And when you view yourself through God's eyes, wonderful things happen. You get a whole new impression. How often have you looked in the mirror and go, who is that? What have I become? Where am I going? And you can look into the mirror with confidence, knowing I'm a child of God. He loves me. I'm committing my way to him today. He is going to direct my paths. Now, how do you get this? How do you get this? Well, it's a revelation, and it comes when you invite Jesus into your heart. So the same prayer that Jermaine prayed, I want you to pray it right now with me. Jesus, if you're real, could you show me? It's a simple prayer. But he'll answer that if you pray it with all of your heart. So don't joke with God. But right now, if you're serious, if you mean business with God, if you want to get right with God, if you want to get the right perspective about you, let's pray. Jesus. That's right. Say his name. Say it out loud. Say it like you mean it. Jesus. If you're there, if you're my Savior, if you can forgive me, if you love me, could you show me? Could you show up for me? Could you forgive me of anything I've done wrong? Could you set me free from my sin? And Jesus, if you do this, I want to follow you all the days of my life. Hear my prayer, for I pray it in Jesus' name. Amen. If you prayed with me, there's one more thing I want you to do. I want you to tell somebody. The Bible says that when you believe in your heart and then confess with your mouth, you shall be saved. When you call, I've uh, made it easy. All you got to do is pick up the phone call, 1-800-700-7000. When you call, I've got a free packet for you. It's called A New Day. How do you live the Christian life? What do you do now? So call. It's all free, no financial obligation at all. 1-800-700-7000. Hello, I'm Gordon Robertson. Thanks for watching the video. Be sure to like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell for more encouraging videos like this one. Welcome to the 700 Club Interactive Family, and God bless you.